I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to another video? There's another paid request this time for Bra at Stipe. Very nice person on here. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Uh, for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, it could be reviews, re reviews, topics, reactions, randomness, out of the blueness, feel free. You can send either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And I need a drink for this one. <laughs> Because Dead Mine, I was not a fan of. There's a kernel, a little hint of what could have been either a, an intense claustrophobic movie or a fun, entertaining popcorn movie. It doesn't either. The characters are minuscule, like you don't know much about them. The actors, are, I think they're fine for what they had, but they just didn't really have anything on paper to play with. And really, at the end of the day, this was a subpar Indonesian version of The Descent. It's an Indonesian production that also deals with a group of people where you have the son of a millionaire, you have this Asian uh, female scientist, you have this mercenary group, one of them is Joe Taslam. He was the sergeant in the Raid Redemption. He plays Sub-Zero in the new Mortal Kombat movie. But he doesn't have much of a role. He's one of the mercenary groups. And again, there's really nothing to the role. No more shorts, if you're wondering about that. Their group, the son of the millionaire, says we need to go to this place. You, they come to find out that the son of the millionaire, millionaire thinks that this bunker houses the treasures of Yamashita. Who is that? A World War II Japanese general who had been rumored to stash a bunch of gold in the Southeast Asian region. And so they're attacked. We don't really get an idea of who's attacking them. We're, I just, I guess just random pirates. Or maybe it's people trying to lead them into this mine, this bunker, or people try to kill them. That could have been something where you can have an action sequence, kind of like Predator or other movies, where if you want to be this action horror film, you have an action scene to get the audience adrenaline pumping and excited, and then go into the horror. No, that's not the case here, because we don't even see who the fuck is shooting at these guys. There's no back and forth shooting or fighting. They just get shot at, and then they run into this bunker which has a bunch of mines in it and then it's a lot of wandering around and they cross this bridge they hear these Japanese war song propaganda music pop up and something about these chambers chemical experiments germ war warfare whatever the hell it is but many of the issues come up with the fact that if you don't have this be in the bunker and the mines, 
that should be ripe for claustrophobic situations, and it's not. The way it's lit, sometimes it's lit as much as this room. I mean, you really want to get the sense of enclosure and claustrophobic setting. You don't really get that in this. The dialogue, a soldier is a weapon ready to be fired. And you, were you one of those weapons? Maybe in the hands of better actors or better people that have personalities or they're given the opportunity to unleash those personalities and the director or the writers or both are able to inflict that, none of that is really here. Because while they're trapped in this bunker in mine, they split up because of course they have to because we can't have common sense be like, no, let's not split up in the scary, creepy bunker. Which isn't that scary or creepy because of the way it's lit and the way it's filmed. Whether you like or dislike The Descent, I like The Descent. The director, Neil Marshall, knew how to shoot those scenes to feel an intensity to them. But the way the creatures are shot, so you, you don't see them quite clearly. And it's noises that you hear. And again, you really get a sense of the darkness. Hell, there's a micro-budget film I saw called The Strangeness. Now, granted, the first half could be considered very, very boring because they only had a minuscule budget of a couple thousand dollars. But while most people find the first half boring, I was fine with it because I got a sense of the isolation and, again, that oppressing feeling. I'm even the type of guy, I'm open to watching a YouTube video Whereas people just exploring exploring an abandoned mine or abandoned caves. It's not something I want to do in real life unless I'm with friends. But like if I'm with friends on YouTube, I would do that. Michael, Mike, Jeffrey, like Fabio, we're all in a, going through. Like I would do that or ghost towns. Like towns that are completely empty. If I was rich, if I had millions of dollars, I would invite them friends and just be a lot of fun but like, I'm open to watching those types of videos so that's a setting I could get into situation wise but I don't think it was accomplished that well in this and then the pacing just drags because it's two it's one guy who used to be a soldier but now he's like an engineer and this Asian female scientist they're in one place and they find this older Japanese guy but he's like mutated but he can still understand and talk his native language, Japanese, but he still talked, is able to communicate and think. Which is weird that he's able to do that, but then others cannot. Because then others, and they split up some more. There's three different kinds of these creatures. There's the more apparently like POW, the like prisoners of war turn into these creatures that don't talk that are kind of albino looking and they got this mask on but they, they'll try to feast on you and claw you and that's when I really felt like just stuff you would see in The Descent only was done better than that hell I could even watch The Cave over this and that wasn't the best movie there's the the only one of the second kinds the Japanese guy Again, he's like a soldier. I don't know why he's the only one there. Why no one else is like him. And I don't like, what has he been eating all these years? Do they eat? Do they not eat? Do they have a lot of fucking food down there? Or do they fight a bunch of fucking rats? Like, I don't know how they kept fed. Maybe they don't need food. I don't know. And then he get into the third act. Because most of the film up till the third act is, spoiler alert, spoiler, 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 Joe Tasm goes over here, kills one of them. He gets blinded, surrounded, killed off screen. Meanwhile, the other two are talking to this mutated soldier that's Japanese that's been, I think, 70 years. Yeah, I guess don't need food. And he's just there to give exposition. 
And then the Asian scientist is able to talk to the guy, oh, turn the enemy into guard dogs, these POWs. Meanwhile, the captain, who's with the son of the millionaire, this other lady, and another soldier, another mercenary, they find this door, they open it up, and it's a bunch of fucking samurai zombie guards. The whole last samurai, samurai get up, I guess they're the imperial, imperial guards, not imperial, imperial guards. Got the whole suit, Yojimbo, fucking seven samurai, swords, mask, armor, everything. Uh, they look like statues, but I think they're people underneath. And number one, I must not have been paying attention, so that's my fault. I blame it on me, not the movie. Because I'm sitting there going, how do we go from Japanese soldiers testing on POWs back in the 70s or World War II era, but then these is like three sets of an army of samurai sword armor that would be like from the fucking 17, 1800s. How, we do, how did we go from that? So I'm trying to piece this together. So when the army was doing experiments in World War II... With POWs, did they get the stuff from these three, from them? Is that where they got the serum, serum from? Or were they just there waiting even during the time of World War II? Did they kill the people who were there around World War II or not? I, I don't fucking know. I didn't understand that part. I'm sure they explained it. I blame it on myself. Because the movie was so fucking boring. I lost interest. And that's another thing. If you're going to now introduce. Samurai zombie guards. Samurai zombies that get shot. Do nothing. So where's the suspense where. You cannot kill these things apparently. They shoot it, it does nothing. At least if you can kill one, you can have some type of suspense of maybe they can get out of it, maybe they can't. Maybe they can kill this one, maybe they can't. There's some type of... But when... Even Michael Myers, when he gets shot, he fucking falls down. Even Jason Voorhees did that in Jason Lives. He got back up again, but... Even he had the decent... This is where you fall down. And yeah, there are movies that have done that. What I'm saying that this movie does. They've done it well. Just depends how it's worked into the script. The direction, all that. But with so much boredom and wandering around. And the little bits of action you get there not panning out. You really want to see. Okay, if you don't do this. There's a film. Actually the sequel. Dead Snow 2. Red vs. Dead. Which is another film I believe I reviewed. That dealt with people going against zombie Nazis. That was fun. That was entertaining. That was bloody. You don't need to see the first one. Because they kind of explain the events of the first one at the beginning. So you can watch the sequel on its own. Dead Snow, Dead Snow 2 I recommend. I think that's a fun movie. That's an entertaining film. And... That is, I think, what this should have been at this point. Rock'em, sock'em, balls of the wall, go crazy after all this build-up. But no, they thought of themselves as a serious, intense horror film, which I'm sorry, I lose a bit of that when you introduce samurai zombie guards. When I see a zombie that looks like a fucking samurai and there's 50 of them behind him, I'm not scared. I was confused. And then I'm like. I kind of laughed a little bit. But the movie's treating itself as if this is the serious fucking thing. You know. The Descent. Imagine the Descent. Those creatures were. The zombie samurai guards. <laughs> Would the Descent be that much intense? 
or laughable. And this is more laughable. And then the finale sucked. Spoiler alert. The the son of the million, millionaire is hurt. The girl stupidly takes the serum, injects it into him. I just thinking it'll be a okay. Nothing wrong will come out of this. Dragging him, and of course he turns to a creature, which is weird. Why did the Japanese zombie? Why did he function as a normal, talking, communicating person? And he wasn't human because he didn't look human at all. He, he looked all fucked up, like mutant face. And he's been there for 70 years, but he's still, you know, he's not the old Lo Pan from Big Trouble Low China. He could communicate and do all this, but this guy can't. I don't know why. Does the serum just pick and choose who wants and doesn't want to fucking turn to that? Like the, the POW, the guard dogs, they act different than the Japanese that can... The Imperial Guards, they can seem like they think, they don't talk, but... Like, at one point, they... Instead of killing the, their human guard dogs, they cut the mask off of them so they can use their teeth but yeah that son of the millionaire turns and kills the girl bashes her head against the wall slash graphic isn't making a sound the captain tries to fight fails in two seconds gets sliced in the stomach again not that gory like you don't really see much of anything I'm like wow that was nothing uh, before that the one mercenary got stabbed by these guys, by these things. The last two is the engineer guy and the Asian scientist lady. They escape through the tunnels. Then they jump, jump down to this pool of water. There's the opening, the hatch. The girl goes. The guy's like, I'll be right there. The zombie samurai guy jumps to the water. The guy looks at it. And he goes in the hatch. Like, he's gone to the hatch to the outside. That is the last time we ever see that guy. I guess we're supposed to believe he's dead, even though he's one of our major characters. I should not have a question mark as to whether the fuck he's dead. It's not like, oh shit. Samurai zombie raises sword, cuts away. No. Jumps down. You see the guy going in the hatch to the outside. The swim. And then it cuts away. And then the Asian lady gets on the beach, uh, gets on the, the surface. All the samurai zombies, they come up. For some reason, one of them picks her up, then drops her. Takes a sword slice, literally does this to the camera, and the movie's over. And I'm sitting there going, so I guess everybody's dead? And your two of your major characters don't even get death scenes. One, I cut away, and it took me a full minute, is that guy dead? I still don't know if the guy's dead or not. And the girl... Guess she's dead from the slice. <sighs> so on top of the boring wandering around, the production values values being low enough that you can't really deem much of an intensity or claustrophobic setting, trying to take zombie samurai guards serious. Now, you have this shitty fucking conclusion where one character, I don't even know if they're fucking dead or not. It'd be one thing if the girl turns and there's the guy's dead body. Like, no. Were they saving it for a sequel? Did they really think they were going to get a dead mind too? Because this sets itself up for one. And then it makes it go, if it was that fucking easy for them to escape, why did it take them so fucking long to escape? 
Well, it didn't seem like it took them that fucking much of a trouble to steep out of there. Why the fuck didn't they do it in the first place? What were they waiting for? Oh, okay, they open up the hatch, uh, our mercenary team. But then they're closed and then, then they get stabbed. I'm like, there's like a hundred of them. If they all, you tell me, <laughs> none of them could work that, or whatever. I guess that's why. Just the, I'll let that go. Like, whatever. I'll let that go. What I can't let go, though, is... They really thought they were going to get a sequel. I can only assume that. Maybe not. I mean... I remember watching this and going, that's the end? Really? It doesn't work as an action film. The action scenes, bar there's barely any. And the very few, there's nothing of note to talk about with them. It's not that gory of a film. It's not. Yeah. It's not scary. And there's no sense of claustrophobia on like The Descent. Even the one film, The Outpost, with the... I think that was the one with the guy from Punisher Warzone. I believe it was called The Outpost. What was it called? The Bunker. I can't remember. can't remember now. Even that had more of an inkling of trying to have a mood compared to this. Dead mind more like a dead fuck. And the computer don't lie. So fuck the movie. Boring fucking piece of shit. Go watch The Descent. Go watch Dead Snow 2. Red vs. Dead. Make a double feature of that. And The Descent, watch either version. Whichever one you like the ending more. Fuck The Descent Part 2 though. That's a piece of shit. Just like this movie's a piece of shit. The Descent 2 is worse because that had a monster taking the dump on our lead characters. And even just as dumb or dumber of an ending. But... The Descent Part 2 is more insulting. This is just lame, boring, and... It should just, if you were going to have undead zo samurai zombies... Maybe think of that... What was that Nintendo game? Samurai Zombie Nation or something? Fuck, you know. Or Zombie Nation... What the fuck? Fuck it. Later.